Attention. Attention. Encoded message. Hello there. I want you to work with me for a moment. Forget game features like being able to sponge bullets or respawn endlessly because in the real post-pandemic city that is Manhattan, you only have to make one mistake and it could be you and your family's life. To make it even scarier, you're not a division agent that is prepared for this kind of situation, but an innocent man trying to protect your family. That's where we meet Mark, Sarah and Gracie, a family of three trying to find a new home, meeting dangerous people along the way, but in the end were helped by Aaron Keener, the rogue agent that is the biggest threat to Manhattan and everyone living in it. Mark, Sarah and Gracie, traveling from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, are stuck in Lower Manhattan after the Manhattan quarantine forced the JTF to close off the bridges and tunnels. They aren't letting anyone through. The bridges and tunnels are all blocked. We can't get back to Crown Heights. Even after you showed ID? They said no exceptions. Motherfuckers. Listen, stay put. I'll make some calls and come back to you quick as I can. Thanks, Al. Okay, buddy of mine from Squad 18 says they got room for you. <sighs> Holy shit, that's great news. It's a couple of families from their company in Engine 24. They hold up in the West Village. Moving up in the world. A lot of rich folks got the hell out of Dodge at the first whisper of an epidemic. There's plenty of prime real estate sitting vacant over there. I'm sure the owners would rather have a few smoke eaters camping out in their cribs than a bunch of junkies are infected. No shit. Hang in there, okay? I'm gonna see what I can do to get you guys off the island, but it might take some time. <sighs> I don't know how to thank you, Al. Just focus on keeping your family safe. Al, a firefighter and Mark's chief, managed to find a new home for Mark and his family in West Village, which is directly below Chelsea District in Midtown Manhattan. In the meantime, Al would find a way for them to evacuate the island, but as mentioned before, Manhattan is a dangerous place. God, it's cold. How much further is it? Just around the corner. Gracie, you ready to be warm? I sure am. She's asleep. Uh, no wonder she's so heavy. Jeez. What if they turn us away? I told you. They're expecting us. It's gonna be okay. I hope you're right. Of course I'm right. I'm always right. <laughs> oh, shit. What is it? What's wrong? <laughs> What's that... What's that smell? Mark! What are you doing? I'm gonna check for survivors. Wait here. And keep out of sight. We should go. Someone could still be alive in there. Whoever did this could still be in there. I'll bug out at the first hint of trouble. I just can't walk away. Gracie, you stay with mommy, okay? Daddy will be right back. I see you hiding back there. You come out here before I get impatient. That's better. Just the two of y'all? What do you want? For you to answer my question. My husband and his friends are coming back any minute. Oh, well, maybe I should go. Wouldn't want them getting the wrong idea. Then again, I've got friends too. Here they are now. Let's see. Now, is that your husband or one of his buddies? Mark! You touch them, you're dead. <laughs> you married a good one. As they turned the corner and their new home was in their sights, a pungent smell filled their nostrils. It was the sight of a violent conflict. Firefighters lied death on the ground. Mark went inside the building looking for survivors. This courage would later be rewarded. Shortly after Mark entered the building, a stranger confronts and captures Sarah and Gracie. That stranger wasn't alone. He and his friends, possibly Rikers or Rioters, raided the place for supplies, in turn killing everyone who lived there, even the children. And now they captured Mark and his family. This only could end badly. Why did you kill them? Why? They didn't give us much choice, did they? Should have let us in. There were kids in there. Yeah, well, that was a mercy. You murdered firefighters and their families. For what? Some supplies? Or did you get off on killing kids? A bit of both. Honestly. You're one too, aren't you? A fireman? You think that bullshit matters when things are the way they are? You think anybody gives a shit about New York's bravest? I care. Man, what the fuck? Shit! Division! Clear! All hostiles down! You folks okay? Yeah. 
Thanks to you. Anybody else alive in there? No. These guys were offering us a place to stay until my chief could pull some strings and get us back to Brooklyn. Uh, well, that's not gonna happen. You can't stay here. Uh, you better come with us. We'll get you somewhere safe. We will? Yes, we will. We sure appreciate it. Try to keep up. Aaron Keener, for the first time since he was abandoned in a dark zone, saved the lives of these three innocent civilians alongside an unknown companion. It appeared Keener still had a heart. Keener would even go the extra mile and find a way off Manhattan for them. It's unusual, but heartwarming behavior from Keener. Why did Keener help Mark and his family? Hey man, what are you doing? Not right this second. With these strays, you got a thing for firemen? They seem like decent people in a bad situation. There's a lot of decent people in bad situations on this fucking island. We're gonna give them an armed escort too? Maybe, if I decide they deserve one. I don't get a say in this. No, you don't. I'm curious to see who the other agent, the unknown speaker is. He was right to ask the question to Keener, because it's unlike Keener to perform a random act of kindness. Still, Keener decided to help the family and their trouble was far from over. How many? About a dozen. Maybe more. Couldn't check the left side without being spotted. A dozen? Those are good odds. How is 2 versus 12 good odds? Because we've got the element of surprise. Evens things out. Whatever, let's get this over with. You three wait here. What's going on? Nothing you need to worry about. Just stay behind that dumpster and keep your heads down. Keener and his fellow agent encountered a group of a dozen hostiles. Who these hostiles were is unknown, but it is assumed they were JTF. Still, with the element of surprise, they could even things out. Don't look, Gracie. Keep your eyes closed. These guys are JTF? They were. What happened here? They got shot. By who? I don't see any other bodies. Does it matter? Grab anything useful. We need to move. Your rings. My what? Your rings are red instead of orange. Both of them. What does that mean? Uh, it means we're having some technical difficulties. Like no Wi-Fi? Yeah, something like that. Is that serious? It's not ideal. But division agents are trained to adapt and improvise. I'll make the best of a bad situation. <laughs> you don't have to worry about us. Hmm. It's good to know. I think they killed those JTF guys. How do you know? Some of them were shot in the back. A few of them weren't even carrying weapons. Why would they shoot JTF? I don't know. I'm not sure I want to know. I mean, if they wanted to kill us, what's stopping them? You guys really suck at whispering. Get some rest. Tomorrow's a big day. I told you I'd get you to safety. I'm a man of my word. Mark was suspicious as the conflict didn't show any other bodies than those of the JTF soldiers. At first Mark accepted it, but then Keener's rings glowed red rather than orange. These details are kind of weird because Keener's rings should have glowed red already. Perhaps he managed to temporarily hack Isaac in order to show orange rings, or perhaps Keener really was without Wi-Fi. <laughs> I chuckled a bit at that part. However, Mark discussed this with Sarah about how he didn't trust Keener and silently accused him of killing those JTF soldiers. Keener reassured them that he wasn't going to hurt them and would help them reach the promised land. What are we doing all the way up here? What's wrong? Don't like heights? I got some feelings about stairs. Hey, try doing that climb with a passed out six-year-old on your back. <laughs> I look out there and tell me what you see. The Hudson River? Further. Hoboken? That's where you need to be. That's the promised land. Jersey? You don't want to stick around here. Trust me. Things are going downhill fast. I thought no one was allowed off the island. Are you gonna let that stop you? Now wait about an hour and then row as hard as you can for the other shore. You want us to wait? Now this part of the Hudson flows both ways. Right now it's slack tide. The ebb current will make crossing a lot easier and faster. What if we're spotted? Oh, with this wind, you should have plenty of time to get across between patrols. Thanks for keeping your word. I remember what I said. This situation is only going to get worse. Avoid crowds and assume everybody you meet is a threat. And you might have a chance. I hope your technical difficulties get sorted out. We'll manage. It appeared the Coast Guard, perhaps as part of the JTF, still were patrolling the shores of the river. How they managed to do this after being weakened this bad is something I'm wondering. However, no one mentioned it was the JTF or a Coast Guard patrol specifically. It could have been the Black Tusk. Mark and Sarah had to cross the Hudson River at night and headed for Hoboken, New Jersey. 
I don't know why that would have been a good place to stay for them, but Keener definitely wanted them to leave Manhattan because of his plans. What those plans are, we all know by now. So if Keener really cared so much about these innocent civilians, why was he planning to launch a guided missile with an eclipse payload at Manhattan? You about ready? In a minute. How long are you gonna sit there? They made it, they're safe. Can we go now? Well, it's a rush. You got somewhere you need to be? You still haven't told me why we helped them. <laughs> a guilty conscience? Is that what you wanna hear? Trying to offset my misdeeds with a random act of kindness. Helping strangers doesn't really follow the recruiting pitch. Just want to know if you're going to make this a regular thing. All right, what's with the interrogation? You put us at risk. I want to know why. Truth? He went into the building. He what? When we first saw him in the West Village. The smart thing would have been to get the hell out of there. That's what most people would have done. But he didn't do the smart thing. He did the right thing. That's bullshit. The smart thing is the right thing. Maybe. Probably. But it made me want him to survive. So it was a fireman thing. Come on, let's get out of here. We have work to do. Mark showing his courage in West Village motivated Keener to save him, because that kind of bravery was rare these days. I suppose Keener does have a guilty conscience and indeed was trying to offset his misdeeds with a random act of kindness. It makes me love him even more and shows the death of the villain that is Keener. I know many of you do too, so let me know what you thought of his story in the comments below. I'm still waiting for an answer from Massive and its developers on the status and location of the missing audio recordings for Aaron Keener, Vivian Conley and even some others. I don't want to make an incomplete video, so I will postpone that for now. In the meantime, don't forget to watch the videos I created on Feilao, Theo Parnell, Javier Kajika and James Dragov. Thank you for watching this video, I'm passionate about all the lore behind the entire Division universe and I hope you liked how I made it into a video format. Please like or dislike the video depending on what you thought, but if you didn't, leave me some feedback on how I can improve. If you're similar to me and love game lore not only for the Division but for many games like Modern Warfare and The Last of Us Part 2, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell or you can even become a channel member. With that, I'm going to prepare the other videos and hopefully I'll see you there. Peace out.